on this computer. All right, okay. So Mike, what are we gonna talk about today? <laughs> I think I was gonna introduce us, I think. Okay, oh, yeah. so. We gotta flub it. Okay. <laughs> so hi everyone. So I would like to welcome all of you to the first virtual Small Business Week 2020. Each year during the Small Business Week, Community Features Nicola Valley pays tribute to the entrepreneurs who contribute so much to our local economy. The small business sector in Merritt continues to play a, a key role of job creation and economic growth. With the COVID-19 pandemic taking a financial toll on many of these business owners, there has been never a better time to celebrate their spirit of resiliency and highlight their achievements. The small business truly are the foundation, the heartbeat, the backbone of our economy. CF Nicola Valley understand the challenging times that business owners are, face, are facing now. That's why we are making a Small Business Week 2020 by offering a variety of free webinars to help maximize your knowledge and assist you growing your business. We would like to provide our small business community with the skills and resources you need to navigate COVID economy. Based on the recent survey conducted by Community Features Nicola Valley, the top two uh, webinars requests were e-commerce and social media. So tonight we are happy to deliver the first part of two sessions of e-commerce. The second session and last will be delivered on Friday, this Friday, October 23rd. I encourage all the participants to sign up if you haven't done so. As you know, in March 2020, much of the world went into lockdown, forcing many businesses to temporarily shut down as of today. Cities are gradually relaxing restrictions, but the future is still is uncertain. Even businesses that are reopening have restrictions enforcing social distancing, the wearing of masks, and limits of how many customers can be at a time. When traditional shopping becomes difficult or maybe scary for some people. So people are increasingly inclined to shop online. And that's why we are here tonight to learn more about the importance of e-commerce for your business. And we have uh, two great amazing facilitators, Mike Fairfield and Steven Bowens. Mike is the founder of Merit Marketing Group with over 20 years in business. Merit Marketing Group continues to provide web hosting, web design, e-commerce, and e-bound marketing solutions for a variety of small business, mid-sized businesses and organizations in Canada and also the US. Mike is currently, speci currently specializes in integrated marketing techniques with a particular focus on emerging web-based solutions. And we have also Steven. Steven is originally from Belgium where he graduated in marketing communication Afterwards, he pursued a master's degree in multimedia in Poland. He has been involved with online marketing for over 10 years. In the past few years, he has done extensive research in e-commerce and inbound marketing targeted to online sales. He now has implemented several online business platforms for a range of clients. Steven has been running his own marketing and media company here in Merit for three years in which he mainly provides support to the city of Merritt, NBIT, and local businesses. Let's welcome Mike and Steve. Go ahead, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> is that, are we getting reverb or is that good? No, okay. we're good. All right. So thank you for joining us. Um, we are, uh, it's a privilege, it's an honor to be here together. Uh, Stephen and I have been working together on a number of projects and as Manuel mentioned earlier, it is a, it is, it is, we're into a time with COVID where there are a lot of businesses that are suffering and then there are a lot of businesses that are in a state of transition. And for people like us, Stephen and I, uh, we are busier than ever. Um, there's a huge shift 
uh, taking place right now with people wanting, if they aren't already, wanting to get their business uh, online. And um, so we're glad to be here tonight to share a little bit about our experience. Uh, tonight, this session is part of two. Um, this Tonight will just be a very uh, basic introduction into e-commerce. What is e-commerce? What's it made up of? Uh, whether you're already familiar with it or you're looking to create a new online business, this will give you some quick insight into what it means and uh, some of the things that go into building uh, an e-commerce site uh, and what things you need to be considering. Um, so we will run through that this evening and um, we're going to ask if you would leave any questions that you have uh, to the end. We'll leave some time for some Q&A. Yeah, and then in the next session on Friday, uh, we're going to go a little bit more in depth on like choosing the right merchant solutions uh, for your business, uh, how to build online interaction, how to market yourself properly online. So that goes in line a little bit with branding, defining who you are, defining your market and how to play on that market. Um, yeah, so I think we're ready for number one introduction to e-commerce. So Mike, tell me a little bit, what is e-commerce? <laughs> So that's a pretty basic question, but let's let's cover all the bases. So e-commerce is business that is carried out online using applications that work on the internet. Uh, now these applications can include email, instant messaging, uh, websites, and mobile applications. Uh, since the advent of the internet, which I believe was 1991, yeah. uh, e-commerce has grown tremendously and uh, it continues to evolve. And now that we have situations like COVID, um, it's growing even more and expanding even yeah. quicker. And there's and no like one straight e-commerce, like there's different kind of uh, systems in place, different kinds of e-commerce markets. That's uh, right. That's right. So there's a... E-commerce is not like typically you would think of e-commerce as uh, something like a, an online store selling retail items on its own, but it's actually part of a much larger ecosystem. Uh, that ecosystem is made up of um, things like online travel, uh, ticketing, movies, events, selling tickets, that sort of thing. That's one part of that uh, ecosystem. Um, we have online retail, like, which is the obvious one, uh, products that are sold uh, on, online. Uh, we have online marketplaces, uh, which are platforms where sellers and buyers can transact together online. Um, and, then, and then there's also things that are sort of part traditional and, and part online. Yeah. So things like um, deals or purchases that might be made that are promoted online, but that require the redemption or the purchase or the actual transaction to take place uh, in person, one-to-one. -one. So for example, um, let's say somebody's selling a car yep. and they're selling it on an online marketplace. So I find um, a car online. Uh, I agree everything with the seller, but I still have to go in in person and often and pay in cash. So it's kind of a, a mixture between online and offline engagement. Exactly. And that kind of leads into another popular growth item, which is the online portal classified. So those, if you think about uh, traditionally like a newspaper that has a classified section, there are a lot of ways for people to sell products and services through classified portals yeah. um, where they just go in, it's free, they list their product or their service and, and connect with people that way. So that we just wanted to just sort of cover the fact that it is a, a very broad uh, ecosystem. So the types of um, e-commerce are B2B, which is commonly referred to as B2B, which is business to business. So businesses that are selling products or services directly to other businesses. Then we have B2C, which is businesses selling directly to a consumer yeah uh, and then there are there is a c2c which is consumer to consumer so an example of a c2c might be uh, an online auction site or ebay 
Um, Amazon is a, a C2C site in the sense that an individual consumer can buy and sell uh, on their own. But Amazon is also a B2C site where as a business it sells directly to consumer. Yeah, and depending on these types of businesses, uh, we kind of do e-commerce a little bit different. As we sell to a business, we, we target businesses different than we target consumers. Um, so we don't, usually for a B2B, you're not gonna put out Facebook advertising that's more tailored to catching people uh, on Facebook that are consumers. Business to business might be more a, a different approach through emailing or contacting business more personally. Um, so there are different approaches for each type of, of business. Right. Okay, let's talk about some of the benefits of e-commerce. Uh, first of all, you are available anytime and anywhere. Uh, there's the convenience where consumers can connect from their home, from their office. They can actually connect through video games, through their phones. So there's many ways for people to connect. Yeah, so it's not just kind of going online to buy something. For example, even convenience, how, how Instagram can already link uh, a Instagram post, but then you can tag a product in that post that will allow you to buy it straight from an Instagram. So the, the barrier to buying has been reduced significantly and it just keeps getting easier and easier to buy. Uh, for example, when Amazon introduced a one-click buy button, where you don't even have to fill out any information. When you click the button, it's going to be sent to your home. So it, there's a very low barrier and it feels like it's keep getting lower and easier to purchase goods online. Right. Um, another benefit is that it's global. Um, there are really no boundaries uh, as far as location, uh, boundaries like languages, um, much of the content that's produced now can be translated into multiple languages and um, you can virtually reach anyone across the globe and people can buy and sell their products anywhere. yeah we all yeah then it goes into universal standards like we all there's always the same technical standards for conducting e-commerce or anything online for example we we all can uh, use Firefox or Google Chrome to go online. Uh, it, there's PayPal that can be used throughout the entire world. There's the same kind of technical um, aspects in place that allow, that, that goes beyond borders basically. Yeah, in other words, like the, the technology is the same all the way around the world. Every country, every language, every you know, it's it's the same technology that's being used. So, in other words, if you're if you're buying something in Russia, it doesn't have to go through their particular system. The yeah. internet is the internet. Everybody can use it, and and so that is just another barrier that that is removed. Um, another benefit is uh, the interactivity. So, we have the ability to communicate. Uh, between merchants and consumers uh, via, via chat, SMS, uh, email, and things like voice over IP um, or VoIP, which is, you know, things like Skype and there's different ways of communicating now, which is, which is also free yeah. to do. And then even interactivity can even go beyond just verbal communication. It also makes it easier uh, for businesses to include consumers in, in business decisions because it, it's very interactive and very fast. So a business can put out like, hey, I'm going to make a new bag. What kind of color should I make? And then consumers can respond in a little survey and then the business can make a decision based on the feedback from, from the people on internet. So interactivity can, there's a lot more interactivity possible than, than the traditional brick and mortar store. Right. Uh, personalization or customization density what's that density uh, where's that oh information density yeah e-commerce comprises a wide source of information available to all stakeholders 
For example, product information, reviews, customer feedback, customer details, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so there's a lot more available, both for businesses and consumers. Uh, for example, as we go online, we can always go and find reviews, whether it's a Google review or it's a Facebook review. There's a lot of information that is put together and 5,000 people can give a review and then it's just densified into a little star rating that will tell you uh, the, the value or the quality of that product. Uh, at the same end for, for businesses, they, they have access to a lot of information. For example, when you create a Facebook ad, you can use Facebook's data to tailor your, your advertisement and your messaging to the, the, the specific kind of people you want to reach because they have all the data available and then we can target anyone we, we basically want. And that's something that was very impossible before. Also, the, um, the feedback on your advertisement, that's a, a big thing. Because before when you put out advertising, you don't really you don't really get a lot of feedback on who saw the message and how they reacted towards that message. Uh, but now with all the information available when we put out an advertisement, we get a lot of information back on how many people viewed it, uh, how did pe how did people respond? Did they actually then click on the button and go to your website? There's an enormous amount of information available and it could be overwhelming, but as we learn how to use it, it, it becomes a huge asset into being more tailored uh, to our market. Right. Uh, and then lastly, another benefit of e-commerce is the social networking nope. uh, capabilities. Nice. Oh, did we? Oh, <laughs> okay. Second to last thing, personalization and customization. So I thought you did bring that up. You talked about that a little bit. but. Oh, we can go more deep. Target marketing messages to people based on their oh. interests and past purchase history. Yes, I so was running ahead. You were running ahead. So that's okay. That's that's basically it. We allow merchants to change products or services to match it with the purchasing behavior and preferences of the consumer, which is exactly what Stephen just yeah. said. And one, one fun example for this would be, for example, uh, we did an e-business for a someone who works with leather products. And as people buy a product online, you could put in, for example, people can type in the name that they want to be engraved or lasered into the leather. So that allows to personalize product, like when the person will receive the product, it, it is completely customized to what they, uh, what they chose when they ordered the product. So, and that's just one example, but that could go, you can go as deep as you want to get a, a fully personalized product that is completely bought online. Okay, and our last point uh, is the social networking uh, capabilities of e-commerce. So using social media, um, the we have a tremendous uh, opportunity to share your business, your brand, the products, the services that you sell through uh, just a multitude of social networks. Yeah. And um, which is then basically you can do a lot for free that for before the internet, it would, exactly. anything would be a printing expense. There would always be an expense connected to networking. Yeah. So taking this a little bit further, just just we just want to point out the main advantages of uh, e-commerce over your traditional uh, brick and mortar business. Um, as we've said before, you're open 24 seven. So people can browse, they can buy, they can sell uh, 24 seven. Even if you're not available, people can still buy your products. Always open, always open. Uh, there's no need for setting up a physical outlet. That is huge. Uh, for those that are looking at starting a new business, you know, you're, if it's a retail outlet, you're looking at real estate, you're looking at rent, you're looking at um, utilities. utilities, you're looking at uh, equipment, um, all kinds of expenses. Uh, whereas um, you've eliminated a lot of that by going online. Yeah. Um, there are no geographic limitations. So 
again, in a traditional business, you're sort of limited to the customers that are in your immediate area physically. Um, and uh, that, that creates tremendous opportunity. Uh, low operational costs and low overhead. Uh, there's a wide, a wider range of products and services that you can offer. Um, I don't know why I keep thinking about clothing retailers because there's all kinds of other businesses, but the, the point is, is if you can only carry so much merchandise in a physical location, um, when it's digital, you're, you can go into, you know, thousands and thousands of products if you, ch if you choose to. Yeah. And then if you work with, for example, if you don't carry your own stock, you work with fulfillment centers or you do drop shipping. Right. I could start a shop tomorrow and, and offer 239 products and not have a single item physically with myself. So there's, there's a huge possibility in, in what we can offer. Okay, another advantage is the, the wide choice of uh, payment options, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later as well. Um, and uh, uh, lastly, another advantage is being able to help consumers compare uh, different products. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, unless you want to spend a day out getting in your car and jumping from store to store to store to compare. It's uh, it's a whole lot easier to just do it now online. Yeah. Right? Okay, you can't talk about the advantages without talking about the disadvantages. Absolutely. I mean, you got to be honest, right? There's, Mike, there. I believe there is somebody waiting to waiting. Okay. Oh. Sorry. So, yes. Hello, Leona. You there? Yeah. We're good? We're good. Okay, let's talk about some of the disadvantages. Oh. Yeah, Are sounds we good? good. Okay. Okay, lacks, lacks tangibility. Yeah, so you know when you go in the store and you just want to go in and touch it? And I guess that's something that we, for depending on the products, but some products are easier, some products are harder, I guess. Mainly when I'm thinking about clothing, you want to go in and try it on and see if it fits. Um, so that is a disadvantage with the internet. It just makes it harder to actually have the physical touch. Right. Uh, there's also a disadvantage um, in the additional barrier in customer service. So similar to what Steven said, uh, you know, everyone likes to talk to a salesperson. They like to see their facial expressions. They like, like to hey, get... did you find what you're looking for? Yeah, and and this is very easy. And does this make me look fat? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you want people to be able to have that kind of an interaction with a salesperson. So, so you need to think about things like this when you're operating your business online. There's certain things like that, customer service, which is very, very important, but, uh, a little bit more challenging to do in an online environment. Yeah. Um, another disadvantage is, is the uh, susceptibility to uh, cyber attacks. And this is you know, not something you want to be happening, obviously, no. but it does. And it happens even to the government and to the banks and to some of the biggest, most secure sites that are out there. So you want to uh, always you know, have that in mind. You, you want to have a backup plan. You want to make sure that you're working with a, either able to maintain things you're on your, yourself or, or be in a situation where you're, where you are, you know, having backups of your site and have a backup plan in the case of something like that happening. Yeah. Um, lower customer loyalty is another disadvantage. Um, Again, that this this industry is exploding, and so it's becoming more and more competitive. And it is for as a purchaser or consumer, um, 
it's easier easy. to jump around. Yeah. And if you find a better offer somewhere else, there's nothing stopping you from purchasing a, the product somewhere else. So that's something we have to keep in mind. Very short attention spans. People are, especially the younger generation, uh, they're so used to digital devices and everything is happening so fast. They make decisions so quickly. So those are other considerations as well. Um, it, it It is highly competitive and it is becoming more and more and more competitive, especially with uh, giants like Amazon to contend with. Yeah. Uh, so you, 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 it's, it's just not as easy as your traditional brick and mortar business when it comes to competition. Yeah. That's kind of in line with the next line as well. There, it, it, it is very easy to start selling online theoretically. So because of that, it becomes more highly competitive as before. If you had to go through the trouble in setting up a brick and mortar, you would think twice in starting a business whether I can make a decision today to start a business and actually have it working by tomorrow. So there's these low barriers to entry. So in a way it's good that anyone can join, but then it's also harder because it makes the whole market more competitive. Right. And lastly, um, this is a, the kind of business that's highly dependent on technology. And so you want to make sure that the software and the, the programs that you're using are always up to date and maintained on a regular basis. Yeah. And especially even for in, in our line of work, like we, we want to be aware of the changes and, and what we notice is that every month the, the e-commerce world is, is changing. It's different. Uh, platforms offer different, uh, options or there's more integrations or things kind of stop working and then you have to find an other alternatives and we find it's 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 changing in a fast pace um, a lot faster than in, in, in the real world where when you have your brick and mortar it's it's there and that's how it's gonna stay and that's how it's gonna be tomorrow yet with the internet there there are things that can change that are out of your control and you just have to make sure that you maintain what you have, you stay updated um, and you analyze if they, are there better ways to do what I'm doing or are there easier ways or cheaper ways to sell online. Because there might be an option available that works today, uh, but in two months there could be a new, uh, a, a new platform that's available that would be actually a lot better for your type of business. So then it would be good to kind of like, okay, is it worth to switch to a different platform? Um, so there's all these things to, to keep in mind, to, to keep on top of, of uh, changes as well. Right. Next. So now let's talk about um, what you need to get ready to sell online. How can you get ready to sell online? These, these are some things we just wanted to highlight, important components of uh, having an online presence or, or website. Um, number one is discoverability. Again, as we said earlier, this is, this is growing. This is, there is a, a, they call it a paradigm shift happening right now. Yeah. A huge shift around the globe of how commerce is, is done and uh, the, the shift of products and services being sold and traded online and how it's, they're being discovered. Yeah. And so because of that, because of the, the increased uh, competition, the noise, the everything that's going on mm -hmm. out there. Um, number one is, is discoverability. And so being found because we can build a beautiful website for you. You can build your own beautiful website now for free. Um, but if nobody knows where it is, <laughs> and that's big because the other day I, I, I uh, someone asked me for a website and, and he ha already has an existing website, looks pretty okay, but he's like, oh, I, I forgot what my website is. We go on Google, we type in um, main keywords, and then we could not find his website. We couldn't find it. And then it's like, oh, I'm the owner, I'm the owner of the website. I can't even find my own website on Google. 
Yeah. So imagine for people trying to find that business or that service, you yeah. can you can have the best website in the world, but if no one actually goes on the website, it's it's work in vain. Yeah. And there's been a, also a big shift from from beforehand. Uh, discoverability had a lot to do mainly with search engines. People go on Google and they find what they're looking for. And now there's a, also a big shift. There's some some products that people will still use Google for, but a lot of more um, impulse buys, impulse products, uh, they'll be more discovered through social media, uh, social ads, and, and people will find your website through an advertisement or a post or a viral video, and it will land on your website through that. So it's not just being able to be fine on Google. It kind of depends on your market and is like, okay, for your type of product uh, and your market, what's the best way for you to be discovered and, and get people onto your website? Yeah. And I'm just going to just, for those of you that may not know what SEO is, it is search engine optimization. It's a whole science in itself and, you know, possibly even a whole nother webinar. Yeah. just talking about, search engines and search engine optimization it's a it's a big deal some companies are spending thousands and thousands of dollars a month uh, just to get their sites ranked as basically uh, how google. high will you pop up on google yeah exactly so but that's not what we're talking about tonight but we do but it is important is yeah. discoverability uh, of your online presence um then and then within your site um, number two, site search. So even within your site, once you have landed on the website, this is a really important component um, that people can, and this is especially if you have lots and lots of products that yes. you're going to be selling. I mean, if you only have one product to sell and it's not a big deal, but if you've got 300 products, you want people to be able to, to do a search easily to find what they're looking for. It's kind of like you go to the site. front desk. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm looking for for goggles right and so it's kind of the, the same thing where it's like okay can i kind of find what i'm looking for because i see a lot of things popping up on my website but i just want that one thing yeah. and overall uh if people need too much time to find what they're looking for they will say okay it's not worth it for me um so i'm just gonna leave the website and find another option right. and it's just to kind of keep people on track first you want to be found easily then you want to keep them on your site easily um, and then yeah then we'll go into the next step merchandising yes just like a brick-and-mortar store really merchandising is you know having the ability to showcase products uh, promote those products promote sales and special offers and in, uh, in the online environment it's really no different it's, it's no different. It's understanding what are the good sellers in the right seasons, the right times, and being able to properly showcase and promote those, uh, those items yeah. online. So that's also very important. Like when you have, when you have your, your mannequin with a sweater on there and it's like, you notice that sweater just because it's on the mannequin and you would have never bought that sweater if it wasn't on the mannequin because it was just stored with all the other ones. And it's kind of, when you're on the website and you just present the product in the right way that people will be like, Oh yes, I think that's something that I would like. And it's in a way very psychological in, in how people per, uh, perceive that product and just the way that how it's presented can make or break the decision whether they want to buy it. Right. Okay. Another important item is categorization or what we like to call information architecture. Even we're talking about e-commerce, but even when we build websites, uh, one of the first things we talk about with the client is the is the uh, the structure, the main site structure, and uh, in e-commerce that's tremendously important. Um, again, it's just like a real store with aisles and sections, and um, making things so that uh, it's you find what you're looking for easily. Um, yeah, like right? we're in the store. There's like oh baking baking goods i know i need to go in this aisle yeah so similar i thought you said bacon <laughs> i love <it. laughs> a bacon aisle yeah 
Yeah. So there's a lot of similarities into your uh, the way you do things in the physical store. Um, there's you have to in a way follow the same pattern, and the experience will be similar online, just in a different format. But in our minds, we still go through the same processes on from finding the store to entering your store to knowing where to go inside that store and all these same steps we want to replicate them in an online experience okay uh, the next important component uh, is the checkout experience this will make or break your business online um, you want to make sure whatever program or website you're using that that and again, it's it's also based on the kind of products that you're going to be selling. But you you want to make sure that um, the checkout experience is is very quick and seamless. Yeah, because uh, that's where the point where people have to put their money down. So then there's like, oh, okay, right? Am I still gonna go through with this? Right. So that software or program or however things are set up, you want it to have the ability to create an account very quickly so that for the next time when people go back on your website is like oh I want to buy another product when when they don't have to fill out all the information again it just makes it a little bit easier for them to purchase that product right uh, the ability to accept payments online and so and we'll talk a little bit more about this later I think in our next session but yeah uh, PayPal uh, there's um, a very very popular uh, payment uh, what do you call it payment gateway gateway or system called uh, stripe which a lot of people are using right now this allows uh, you just to write on the website put in your credit card number uh, the little information and just pay right there right and these are all the kinds of payment gateway solutions that we normally work with the bigger organizations that have secure banking and uh, that type of thing will also, I mean, that's a whole nother thing to get into, but banks yeah. have their own merchant account solutions as well um, that people can look at. But it, we're, we're going to stick with the things that work, yeah. that work well for small to medium sized businesses. Um, shipping information. Um, again, that needs to be something that's very seamless. Um, when somebody purchases a product and throughout that checkout experience, it should be it should be simply a matter of clicking a button or a check mark and shipping information is available for for them and it also sometimes makes or breaks the the purchase because i've gone through the process and in the end is like what 15 dollars shipping for that that's not worth it right and then different platforms offer different solutions for shipping um your basic method is you you put in a fixed number uh, but then more advanced platforms will allow a live rate that that is connected with, for example, Canada Post, which will allow you to put in the weights of your products and that will kind of uh, connect with Canada Post. Oh, it's under this amount of grams, so I can give them that rate or you can choose between uh, standard time or priority. So and that will give more flexibility. Uh, for the consumer on like, okay, I want a cheaper uh, shipping option or I want it faster. They'll have the freedom. And then sometimes based on that, they'll buy or not buy the product. Right. Uh, and similarly, tax collection. Again, when you're looking at cheaper solutions or do-it-yourself solutions, these are kinds of things that you have to figure out how you're going to handle that manually. Yeah. Whereas the the more pricier or the better automated kinds of solutions it's all will, will calculate things like tax tax rates based on different products or different provinces and states uh, where it happens automatically yeah because then even though global being able to sell global is an advantage but then you still have to work with the local regulations and sometimes tax calculation for all and products can get difficult as you're uh, if you sell globally, because there's so many different tax tax systems in place, and then you have to be able to offer um, the right tax option for where your consumer is living. Right. 
Uh, and then uh, the last item as part of the whole checkout experience is, is the order confirmation. I yeah. think we may able to com confirm that order and how you do that. Again, a lot of these things, you know, they're built into the pricier times types of solutions, but they're not, they're not, they're things that you have to think about if, if, if you're going to be managing this uh, on your own. Yeah. Because for example, if you if a customer buys something but they don't receive an email with any kind of confirmation, it's like, wait, did I actually buy the product? Oh, I need to call that business. And then you have these calls from people like, I don't know if my order went through. So then if if you're still connect with, with your customer after they put in the order and send in a nice email, thank you for your purchase. We really appreciate uh, uh, buying this product. And that's how we also can build a customer relationship after their checkout. Right. Next, another important item is uh, the whole fulfillment process. So, um, what, what you got there? So, order processing. Once somebody has processed an order from your site, is are you, are you, is your business such that you carry your own inventory, where you purchase inventory, you carry it on your own location, and then you manually take that item and put it in a box and slap a label on it and go down to the post office and pop it in the mail, uh, which is a viable way to do things if you're a small business. Yeah. Um, or um, are you, you, or are you looking at things like fulfillment centers, which we've been involved with as well, right? You yeah. You talk about DOI paint or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's basically you send a, a whole load of your product to um, a fulfillment center and or it's where, basically where a warehouse, warehouse yeah. where they, they store your products. And then when, uh, when the customer buys something online, it's the fulfillment center that will get the notification and then they will basically fulfill your, your order and you don't have to be involved in this process anymore. And then a, another option is um, for those that don't want to do anything with any product, that's where drop shipping comes in. Which where, is, sorry to interrupt, it's another niche, uh, uh, what do you call that? A niche solution that it's taking off. Like it's there's a, people that are making- kind of e-commerce. A specialized yeah and people there are people out there that that's all they do is drop shipping and they are making a lot of money doing yeah it. and they don't even touch the product right because they basically figured out how to do the e-commerce thing like they know how to do e-commerce so instead of them um, focusing on what product to make and how to make it and then uh, how to produce it they just focus on selling your product and that's that then what's called drop shipping. So for example, there there are businesses that don't want to be involved in the in the e-commerce, they just want to make the product. And then uh, another person who's a drop shipper would say, Okay, I'll 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 do the online presence for you, I'll sell your product, I'll deal with everything. Um, but they don't touch the product at, at any point in time. Um, then uh, another option. Uh, you should have to consider a lot of things, don't you? <laughs> uh, in the fulfillment process, uh, shipping, carrier pickup, and and there's the, even in that there are like automated processes with, with existing carriers. Yeah. So uh, unlike the doing everything manually, slapping a label on a box and go mail something. Or even like to slap in, yeah, label, like creating your own label, putting in the your the address and all the information. Yeah. Um, but that that could get tedious at some point, especially if, if you get if you have to process several orders a day. Um, and then there is uh, for example online software, for example, ShipStation. Uh, it's it's an online platform that connects to your online store and is basically a warehouse manager. Uh, from there, you can get a picking list on all the products that the customer wants. Um, then it, it it gives you a total of the, the weight of all your products that will have to be sent to the courier. 
Um, it'll automatically will create a, a shipping label that is connected to your DHL account. Um, so a lot of these things can be automated. And then overall, it's things that as a, as a business grows and things get to the workload gets too heavy, then there's always options to automate more of the online e-commerce processes. Right. Uh, the last item with regard to the fulfillment process is uh, R called RMA, which is returned merchandise authorization. And that's another really important factor in, uh, in that whole e-commerce experience. Customers want to be able to return an item and it happens all the time now. Yeah. Uh, I guess Amazon is probably the best example of that. And, uh, you know, if you, they're, people are competitive enough that th they're just sending stuff out for people to try, even if it's, uh, you know, f just to try. And if you don't like it, you, you send it back. And that whole process is very seamless, being yeah. able to return an item. Um, again, as Stephen said, th th this is, you have to consider these things, or is it because the whole process has to be considered. Yeah. And if one of those links in the chain is weak, you're going to lose out to your competition. Right? Yeah. Uh, so returning merchandise, it's another factor. You got to think about it. Is it something I can manage on my own getting started? Can I deal with this um, and get back to people and return their products quickly and efficiently? Or should I be investing in a solution that will automate that process for me? Right? Yeah. Um, next is uh, connecting with your potential customers. So um, we'll be talking a lot about this in our next session as well, but yeah. we have the ability to connect, to build uh, an audience, to, to grow your audience. And we can do that through uh, the different devices that we use every day, obviously. Yeah, so we, we have, have to be aware of that. Um, potential customers, they use a whole range of different devices, right? Not everyone's using a laptop. Uh, actually, most, most of the browsing and the e-commerce is done on the phone. Um, so desktop is becoming a, a minority. And yeah, mobile phones, tablets, um, connecting through social media, and that can be organic or just through conversation and listening uh, and engaging with people online. Yeah, it could also but, be creating creating viral content, finding ways to, to stand out in the crowd and, and find a way to connect to potential customers. Yeah, and I believe there's another session coming up from the people in Kamloops, is that yeah. right? Uh, that are gonna be talking a lot more about social media and it would be great to, you know, to take that in as well, because it's a huge component, social media, uh, engaging with, with the people through social media is, is a huge part of business. And uh, nowadays it is. And then, yeah, more in certain markets than other markets. Right. Um, also connect, speaking of connecting, right. With, with customers, um, rewards programs are a big thing. Um, offering referrals. Uh, so let's say you have a customer that really likes something they purchased. Um, you, you offer incentives for them to share what their experience has been with their family and their friends and so on and so on. Yeah, and because it is people trust what people near them say. If, if, if I go to Mike and I say, hey, Mike, I really like that new restaurant in town. I think it, it's, it's solid. You should try it out because Mike knows I like good food, he's gonna like, okay, he, yeah, I should try out that restaurant. Um, and that's the same with the, with the reward programs. We want people to say, hey, you should uh, check it out. And in the same time, those people will be rewarded. If you refer a friend, you will get a 10% discount. And I know a lot of businesses that really solemnly on referrals, that's how they, how they grew their, their business. I, I think uh, Dropbox was was a one that was really where referrals were really important for them because they they wanted to get more customers, but it was just that they wanted other people to say like, "Hey, you should use it. It's it's really good for um, 
for having cloud space available in, in a time where it wasn't really that that popular yet. And then in reward, they offered free uh, free cloud space. So I was like, and and I think it was they give they give quite a quite a bit of 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 data available just for you to refer their service to other people. And that's kind of what what gave them their success. All right. Uh, email marketing, big, big part of uh, building your business online and growing your list. Um, so you want to, you want to make sure that you have something in place where you're, it's easy for people to uh, subscribe so that you can have a list and begin uh, ongoing relationship through email where you're sending them updates and specials and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And even though email itself is becoming a bit more outdated email marketing is still one of the pillars in connecting with your customers because the email database that you have gathered you always have access to it um, for example um, if if you have uh, a lot of engagement with your with your customers through facebook um, but let's say something happened and tomorrow facebook is just not used anymore you lose all that uh, that market, those contacts. So email marketing allows us to build up our own database of, of customers or potential customers that at any point we have the decision uh, to communicate to our customers without any third party uh, application in between me and the customer. Right. Um, and then uh, the last item here is search marketing. So we talked a little bit about that earlier too, search engine optimization. And PPC is pay per click. So uh, again, reaching customers, you can do so if you invest a little bit of money in uh, uh, things like um, Google AdWords. Yeah. Uh, right, and, and, then, and then it's also the nifty on how it can connect. For example, if people were looking for uh, similar plot product uh, the, the paid search marketing can can make you visible to people who are looking for for your product and because then Google knows you are looking for the product and then they'll know that they'll connect to you uh, more easily because they know you're looking for it and then when you put the the paid ad on Google there's a higher chance that people will click on your on your ad Right. Okay. Moving along. Moving this along. is the big stuff here. Okay. Like this, now is this is the stuff, stuff that is just exploding. All right. Three, two, one. Boom. What are the most popular e-commerce platforms out there? There is a slew and it's just exploding. There's new thing. We don't know, right? We don't know. It is I mean, we know what we've been working with. We have an idea of what the main solutions are that are out there but it's like every day something new is coming out it's always and expanding and it's always changing so and that makes our job kind of interesting because it's like hey steven have you seen this thing and what it does because there's always something new to discover yeah i mean it's it's interesting where it's good and bad it's yeah it's crazy because sometimes you feel like you're chasing down a rabbit hole and you end up you know it doesn't work as good as you know something else but anyway yeah but here's the thing you can get online and start selling stuff for nothing now yeah right you, now. you didn't used to like i remember i'm old i'm i'm at this 10 years more than him the first e-commerce site i did i i cost it cost the client thousands of dollars and i had to do a lot of the coding and i had to do individual and it was all like it was crazy amount of work oh yeah that was like 10 years ago or more nowadays you can do it all for pretty much for nothing if you're willing to put the time and effort into it right I yeah mean, there's a lot of solutions out there so things that took a week of time you can now just yeah exactly so let's just talk about some of the the free and easy stuff and then we'll go through this list and to the to the more costly more sophisticated stuff that's out there yeah. and again just go on to Google and search your, for yourself and you're going to find that there's all kinds of all kinds of solutions out there. Um, okay, social media platforms. We've got 
uh, Google, you can sell products on just on Google. Yeah, Google Shopping. Google Shopping. Uh, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook and Instagram. And as it's changing, because originally Facebook offered you to display products you want to sell, but you still had to uh, find your own way on getting paid. So as they're all kind of evolving and changing now, Facebook and Instagram offer a checkout solution in, in Facebook and Instagram itself. So you don't even have to link people to a, a different page. It's, yeah. it's kind of, it's like we're putting ourselves out of business by telling people this stuff. Oh yeah. Cause we want to build websites for them, but they, oh, yeah, don't, but have, they don't need it. But we got limited time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> we can uh, only handle so much. Yeah, that's true. Uh, there's free websites. Like you can build a website for free now. Yeah. We shouldn't be saying that, but it's true. You can. No, but there's then, a, yeah, but then, sorry. Well, oh, go ahead. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to play a Canadian game? No. no. So yeah, why well, I put the free in bracket, there's a lot of also website builders where you can easily start for free, but then at some point the fees will start to add on and Usually that's kind of their, their marketing as in like, Hey, you can build it for free. But then once you start to build it for free, there's like, Oh, but why is that watermark on there? Oh, or, but why cannot add more than five products? Oh, why can I not? Yeah. And then, uh, in, in increments, it'll, it'll charge you more, but the basic is always free. And then you can always kind of get started or play around. So I think, I don't know if we'll have a copy of this for, people that are watching if you want to refer to it back again but um some of the free website builders the common ones are weebly uh wix um you may or may not know this but mailchimp started out as just a mail an, a newsletter program but they have evolved into a full-blown marketing solution yeah uh that is focused on building a list which we talked about earlier but now they have an e-commerce capability as well. So you could actually set up a free MailChimp account, create a landing page, put products on it and sell right out of your MailChimp account. Yeah. And we noticed that a lot of more platforms that were offering a service will start to add on e-commerce solutions as well. For example, Weebly and Wix, these, these are website builders. Uh, but now when, when you go there, they'll also like, Hey, you can sell your products on, on the website that you build with us because more and more people want to do e-commerce and they see the need for e-commerce. So everyone wants a piece of that pie and whatever their service was before, it's likely that they already added or will add e-commerce features to their service. Okay. Uh, next item again. That, that, that this is just an entirely different solution, but they're the they're growing. Yeah, uh, online marketplaces. Obviously, Amazon is the giant. Um, Amazon, eBay, uh, are probably the biggest biggest ones. But you literally can run your own online business by selling on that platform without yeah. having your own website at all. So you don't even have to build a website. There's lots of people who make their living just on selling on Amazon. Right. And that's a whole nother thing when you get into, uh, Amazon has an affiliate program where you can become an affiliate of Amazon and sell their products Yeah, as well, which is a whole, which is a whole other thing. Um, those, those um, online marketplaces are based on transactional fees. So when you, sell something they take a fee off of the item that you sell yeah which eliminates a whole bunch of other things like carrying inventory and and that sort of thing yeah um okay next we have uh solutions like um zen cart woocommerce are very very popular items and they're like the out of the box quick free um, if you have an existing website, like a WordPress website or a Joomla website, these are things that you install as an add-on or a plug-in, uh, and you can virtually set up a whole online experience. Um, again, it's something that you are going to have to maintain on your own, but it is a very, very- full autonomy over your, your online business. 
and it's less expensive again, right? So we're starting from the free to, and we're building up to the things that cost a little more and more as we go. Um, dedicated e-commerce platforms. So these are things that both Stephen and I are quite familiar with. Um, uh, solutions like Shopify, which we're both big fans of. It's a Canadian company. It's a Canadian company. It started by a bunch of guys with a board shop and it's just blown up into one of the world's largest e-commerce uh, solutions right now. A big competitor to Amazon actually. Uh, it, because brick and mortar or, or local individual small businesses have the ability to go in and compete with big giants like Amazon using things like Shopify. So the difference with Shopify, big commerce, Volusion is another one, um, is that um, you're going to pay a little more. You'll probably pay a monthly fee. And I know Shopify starts at $30 a month and it goes up into the Actually, what did we say here? A thousand dollars a month or more. Yeah, um, depending on additional plugins you use, from what features, every feature you have to pay for. Uh, so it's something like you can start off uh, fairly cheap, but you do have to keep in mind that you do have to make a certain amount to break even. Right. Um, but it's something. And it's a. It's a. It's. A, it is a. It is a main operational expense, and it has to be looked at it that way. Yeah. 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 Um, I would add that um, the, the reason why I think it's so popular and the reason why we like to work with it is that um, a lot of the, you know, like you, you, the maintenance, the hosting, the updates, the extra features and plugins and all these all of these things are included so it's not on our server now where we're having to watch it maintain it and keep things going you're paying for the service if it's shopify shopify has their data center they have their own technical people they they take care of everything and make sure it's always safe and secure and up to date yeah. um and so i mean that's why you need to pay for it so yeah. but it's worth it i think Yep. And we like to recommend it to other clients because it takes the headache. Like we can be do our creative stuff and help with the marketing of it and let them take care of uh, all the technical details. Yep. Um, now, I'm, I just bring this up. Steve and I were talking about this earlier and it is a whole, uh, another whole thing and another strategy which we can talk about on Friday. But um, there is a, a, a solution if, uh, they're called um, uh, they're called funnels, dedicated funnels. Now, with a traditional e-commerce platform, you can create funnels, but there are solutions like ClickFunnels. It's the name of the software, and I think do you know any other names? There's two or three others that are out there. Yeah, ClickFunnels is the biggest and most popular. Design their platform specifically on on funneling people in into to buying your product. Yeah, so it's kind of like a mixture of social media, email marketing, uh, tripwire. What do you call that? Where you build uh, manual? We know your your business model is where you are constantly adding value to a product that you take them up the value ladder. Yeah, you so just kind of catch their attention. And then you kind of like, hey, and then you bring them a little bit closer to the point that, that they want to buy usually the one product that you're selling. Right. It's, it's not for like, hey, check out all our products. It's like, no, we want to sell you that one product and we'll try to capture you from the, the, the mass audience to those that would be interested and then kind of get them closer to yeah. selling you that one product. Yeah. So it, it, using uh, the Funnels are very, I'm giving an example of uh, like, let's say you have an, a, a course that you've put together, a training course or a book or, you know, like an individual item that's got real value to it. Um, it click funnels would be something to seriously consider because it is automated that whole process of, of that, of focusing on that yeah. tar targeted item. 
Um, okay, then we get into the the bigger, more robust solutions. Magento has been around. It's an open source kind of like a content management system. It's one of the largest platforms out there. If you have a larger business, say a mid-sized to large business or corporation with several employees and lots and lots of products, uh, you might want to consider looking at something like Magento. And I've done, I think, three sites with Magento. It's, it's, there's a lot of work involved. It's a lot more technical. So I would say if you're starting out in e-commerce, it's probably not something you're going to be looking at. No. But if you are already into e-commerce and you're looking to expand, then Magento might be something to look at. Uh, and then we get into things like Kibo, Salesforce. Um, th these are the bigger, bigger, more expensive and robust uh, programs that are out there. Big brands, big brands. All the big guys are using things like that. And they're spending literally tens of thousands of dollars a month uh, to run that kind of software. Yeah. So, so we have a huge range and then many options in that range. So, yeah. So in summary, there are many, 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 yeah, many, many options available and they go from free tools to costly full feature solutions. Um, so that is something we have to be aware of. Uh, then second, we talked about order fulfillment. We got to sell the product. Now we still need to get the product to the customer and how we follow up. And then, and then to get customers, you have to expand your reach, uh, use social media, use online marketing, uh, paid searches, there's organic ways, pay ways. So there's a lot of different ways into expanding your reach and to connect into your audience online. So yeah, finding the, the right platform or a combination of different platforms that's going to work best for your business is something that we're going to look at in the next session. And then also a little bit more on like how to reaching your audience uh, through online marketing. And then we'll go a little bit more practical, um, a little bit more visual. And yeah, that's something to look forward to on Friday. Any last words, Mike? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I know that's a lot to throw at people. Yes. But, but I think they're all, some of it's very basic. It's, I mean, you know, but, it, but it's also, you, you need to remind yourself of it, I think, every now and then. There's... Yeah, when you want to start e-commerce, there's a lot of things to keep in mind. And in a way, it can be overwhelming, but in other ways, it's just there's a lot of information out there and we are able to, to, to research, to read, to check reviews. And in the end, that's kind of next week, we'll, we'll kind of narrow it down a little bit for like small, medium-sized businesses. What are kind of like the better solutions out there for your type of business? And so now we'll, I think we're are you good. Yeah. We're going to just leave it open now for a bit of Q and a, if anyone has any questions for us, we'll do our best to answer. And boom. So, um, Leona Rosalie, do you have any questions for Steven and Mike? Um, I just, like, I'm just starting out a business. So I'm just wondering, where do I find all this information? Do I have to sit there and surf for hours? <laughs> or is there an outline somewhere? Or well, let me ask you, what can I ask you what kind of business it is that you're looking um, I'm going to start off with Bannock. Um, served out of my house. It's going to be Aboriginal component to it. Um, and then I'm going, I used to be a caterer. And I kind of got tired of catering because it's a lot of work. So I thought I'm going to save up and get a food truck. Nice. Nice. That's yeah. Nice. So that's my goal is to push my bannock and then get into a nice food truck and I can go where I want. Nice. And then you'll have that mixture of like kind of e-commerce, but you're still selling a physical product in real time. Exactly. And then I sell beads on the side. I do a couple of different things, but yeah. um, it's kind of all Aboriginal component to it. So. Okay, I've got, I've, got, I've got some good advice. 
first of all, okay. have you seen the movie Chef? Yes. Now, the yes. 10-year-old boy that was with the guy in the food truck was yes. all over Instagram and Facebook and tweeting and telling people about upcoming events and just drawing crowds of people. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I would definitely, like, take part in this social media thing coming up because... because oh, yeah, I'm going to be in all week. <laughs> yeah, social, social media is powerful. That's where you can share your story. That's where you can start to engage with people. And especially when you're moving around, like, hey, I'll be at this location. Yeah. Um, just to keep keep that engagement so people know when to expect you where and how. Yeah, I would say you don't need to spend money on things like Shopify, not right now. No. I would say you could go with a free website builder or... It's more of building that relationship and that engagement, I think. It... Yeah. Um, well, the, sorry. One thing I wanted to do was sort of like a, um, I'm a live or open house, or not open house, but I'm just going to call my family and friends and I'm going to give them a taste of my bannock, like yep. a freebie, one time freebie. And if they turn around and refer people, they can get discounts on their orders next. Perfect. So I thought that would be a start anyway to get my name out there. And, and where and I live isn't very big, but I know the right people. Right. And as you're giving them free bannock, I would just uh, record them with your phone and get that, that first initial response. You bet. Yeah. So. Authentic, like when they're like, oh, nice bannock. Bank right on the video. You put that on your Instagram. People yeah, is like, for sure, that person thinks that's good bannock. I think I need to go try that bannock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, definitely get used to, like, use the free stuff. You don't need to be spending money right now. No. Take advantage of the free stuff that's out there. But it it is discipline. Like you you got to change discipline. the way you do things. Like we're still learning ourselves. Like we you. You have the ability, you, you are a media company. You might be making Bannock, but you're a media company. And that's the way you got to think of yourselves. You have a phone and you have the ability to connect with anybody anywhere around the world. So use that phone of yours. Okay. Take, take photographs of your food, take photographs of events, take photographs of yourself and your staff and the things that you're working on. Take lots of video, yeah. right? little clips of video of your activities like you want to make friends with people online and the i would say put your energy and effort into social media and building an audience that way who you are you're a likable person you know your family loves you like share your family share your share everything about what you're doing get it out on social media and yeah, i'm stories. when i say this i say like multiple times a day this is not a once a month thing no no it's, it's part time running a media business part-time baking bannock exactly i have a question for you um i thought of a cash and carry um idea since we have covid right so i was wondering what do you think of that i don't know what you mean okay so if somebody puts in an order phones in an order they come in they pick it up and they walk out so it's like they give me cash they carry the food out so I, I know some businesses um, in the city are doing that and they call it a cash carry program. I see, yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think of All that? right. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to attach a, a online payment for people that want to avoid that physical contact nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. So you can order in online and yeah. that would be a, a basic, yeah, none of the, none of the, expensive ones but like a, a basic checkout or there's even for food there are um for food specifically there are platforms out there where you can add your store to to that website and then you can add your menu in there and people can check out there and then it's connected to your business um that's where yeah every every market has its own set of options available and this is where it's so infinite um oh, okay but there are awesome food yeah, I, I don't know any top of my head, but kind of where, yeah, I mean, in the end, that's kind of where I go on Google and I go like, um, how can I add my restaurant to a online uh, portal or food distribution? Yeah. What would you Google? Yeah, that's what I, I guess I need to know is this lingo. 
<laughs> in order to Google the right stuff and how to find the people. Um, Cause I would have never asked. Or I never knew how to ask about platforms. Yeah. And then, yeah. So one way would go with like a third party, bigger portal. And then another way would be um, if you have a little website and then have a, a little e-commerce section in your website kind of. Oh, so okay. Kinda, uh, when we, talked about like WooCommerce, if you have a little WordPress website, now you can just for free attach the, the WooCommerce plugin in there, add Bannock, people can then just kind of check out, order it, you get the confirmation by email, okay, that person paid for it, and then they can pick it up. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you very much. I'm enjoying your workshop. Can't wait for oh. the next one. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, because then on Friday, we'll go, yeah, a little bit more like practical, and then give yeah i want to offer some more specific solutions for uh smaller businesses or or for example then businesses that are kind of like half half physical half online mm -hmm. because in a way it's easier if there's still this kind of physical aspect because you can still go to the store or still pay in cash um so yeah there's less less barriers it makes a couple aspects easier or you can kind of go step by step more fully online but start okay out by, start out by accepting cash but then you can over time build in an online payment gateway so that people can then start paying uh by credit card yeah it and depends can, on how this world goes right <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah that's the thing we don't know what's what the world's gonna look like in a month and um, <laughs> yes but, okay well thank yeah. you very much no, no, yeah, I'm excited. It's always good to have more Bannock in town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, have a good night. Thank you. Okay, so um, I do have a question, so but I don't want to take uh, much time. So, Rosalie, do you have any other questions for them? No, I don't. It was a very helpful overview, so thank you very much. <laughs> Excellent. So, then, Mike, Stephen, as you know, when somebody starts starts a business, it takes time yeah. for, for the business owner to establish that product or service in a community like Merit. Right. So when we are talking about e-commerce, how easy, how long is going to take for that entrepreneur to establish their e-commerce presence when we are talking about big companies as Amazon and other ones that they have been already positioned their products and services for a long time. So as a, a small business owner, how long is it going to take for you to position your your, your products in online. Right. Yeah, thank you, Robert. thank you. Oh, what are, do you think you got a better answer? I don't know what your <laughs> answer is. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, comparing to, to the real life world, um, yeah, it always depends on um, if you throw in more money, you can get things faster. That's the same if you do more advertising, um, if you spend more money on search engine optimization you'll you'll get faster in that kind of routine um because things takes time for example being ranked on google if you want to do it the organic way it might take some some time and some work into updating and refreshing your content so you would kind of go higher up in google and then people will start to find you more and then a, another big aspect is the the social proofing um, that is, um, how many other people are saying that this is a good product? And when you start off, there's just not, not a lot of, um, you're not going to have a lot of re reviews. Um, but then businesses that are in, 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 in business longer, they'll have a whole lot more reviews and then you'll become easier for, for people to buy your product because they feel like, oh, okay, I can, I can trust this merchant to buy their product because he has 500 good ratings compared to someone who started with uh, with 20 ratings but that's also things you can expedite for example you can send out free your product for free to a lot of people and say hey i'll give it to you for free just leave me a review so you can kind of make that process go faster then it all then depends on how hard are you willing to work on it and how much time and how much money are you uh, willing to, to spend in it yeah. Do you have great. anything to add? No, that's great. That's a good point. I, always, I guess I would only add that um, 
the the challenge is really not much different than 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 the current challenge of you know small community big box stores up on the highway you got little stores down in the down in the downtown what are you going to do to get your customers to come into the door amazon's a big giant on the outskirts of town on the internet yeah <laughs> and, uh, and then it depends on your on your market do you have more of a niche product that is not easily found from the big the big stores yeah and there's no question i mean i love amazon i gotta be honest I, there's certain things i can get there and uh, and you'll it, save me an hour drive to kamloops and it's 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 you can have it in a day like it's amazing what they're doing with the shipping and all so you these are all the kinds of things you got to consider as a small business owner. Am I in the right kind of business? Am I selling a product that Amazon's going to knock me on my knees? Yeah. Or is it something Maybe that's where I can offer a value that is more appreciated than getting it fast? Exactly. Something that relates to the tribe or the, the, um, the, the community of people that you are going to serve. And yeah. so you need to focus on things that Amazon cannot do. And that's where, as we uh, um, told, who did we tell? Um, Rosalie. Rosalie on, yeah, when, when you do media, you know, like include stories, include your, your, your own life, because we can emotionally connect with Amazon, but we can emotionally connect to a small business who we know who they are and, and what they're doing and how they're doing their job. So that gives our advantages over over the bigger stores and yeah. that is something that small businesses when they play it right you can touch the strings with people that big stores can't and then they can grow big really fast yeah i, I just want to add to this too is that i think you need to be careful some people are on this pity party thing right they're, so they're like shop from me support me because i'm local and i'm struggling mm. and i don't think that's the right no, kind no. of strategy at all you know you're a decent person. You got a decent product. You got a decent service. You're local. You know. You, yeah. Promote your strengths. Don't just promote your strengths. Party. You know. When you talk to me, you're talking to a real person. You know. There's all kinds of things that you can do that Amazon can't do. Yeah. And like so, for example, with the bannock, this is my grandmother's recipe, like that I am exactly. baking. You can't get that at at Save On. Yeah. Like this. Right. Uh, yeah. Did that? How was, was that? No, that was, thank you. I was happy to hear that when you guys were covering the different e-commerce e platforms, you yeah. mentioned that there is a good opportunity for small businesses to compete using uh, Shopify or other platforms. So that, that's good hope. That's good information for those small businesses that they can utilize e-commerce to promote their products. Right. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Because they can have that professional, solid, uh, e-commerce experience without touching coding and that's something that Shopify it can make you look like you're 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 a trustworthy professional store with a professional checkout process that people can feel as safe as checking out on Amazon uh, would it be a shameless shameless plug for us to mention we happen to be Shopify partners, like certified Shopify partners. <laughs> so if anyone needs assistance building a Shopify site, Steve and I could certainly help you out. In fact, we could even offer a free extended trial. So you could set up your store. You can take a period of time to play around with it, make sure it's something that you're happy with and you want to work with. And, um, and then if you are interested in using it, then you can start paying for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, yeah. Yeah. Our trial is 90 days. Well, the, yeah, I believe it's yeah. 90 days. But yeah. if you just get a normal trial, you only get 30 days. Right. Yeah. So in other words, you could go directly to Shopify and set yourself up and have nothing to do with us, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, or you could have an extended period of time where you, can work with us 
And then what happens is if you become a Shopify customer, we get a commission on the monthly payment that you would make. So it doesn't change what you pay Shopify. That's how we showcase the affiliate system. Exactly. Yeah, which is what we talked about, right? Yeah, that's how that works. Because we're in the e-commerce business as well. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So if there are no more questions, so we want to thank you, Stephen, uh, Mike. It was, you know, like I have a different concept of e-commerce now with this presentation. I'm looking forward for the presentation on Friday. And I just would like to remind you that there are other sessions. Tomorrow we have the session with the City of Merit regarding business license and zoning bylaws. Wednesday we have the presentation with our partners with Camloops about social media, Thursday, we would like to invite you to our business after business community features is having, um, we will have some speakers, the CAO from the City of Merritt, the Chamber of Commerce acting chair, as well as any other uh, businesses that want to share their success stories with us. And we are going to be ending a small business week on Friday with the second session of e-commerce. And now, Joe, we have a, a little surprise for the people attending and Joe will expand on that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you guys so much for attending. Uh, and I, I love the session myself. I didn't know that tidbit about MailChimp and I use it almost every day. Uh, very, very cool. Um, it's all recent. That's where it's always changing. And you're like, what? They do, they offer this now too. And Crazy. Yeah, yeah it's unreal. Uh, what I wanted to share quickly, uh, typically when Community Futures does uh, their small business week, um, it's an opportunity for us to partner with, uh, with local restaurants or, or catering companies, provide some free goodies, uh, and support a local business. Uh, it's, one of, it's one of my favorite parts of Small Business Week, and it's one thing that we were sad to see go missing now that we had to go virtual and do the Zoom thing. Uh, we've managed to figure out a workaround. Uh, if you attend this seminar or any of our other online workshops or webinars for Small Business Week, uh, come down to Community Futures. Uh, we've partnered with three independent cafes in town. Uh, that's Bramble's uh, Bakery and Cafe, uh, Mandolin's Bag One Coffee House, and Kukuli Cafe. Uh, and we can give you a little voucher for a free treat. It's a coffee and a little bit good for you. Um, come on down and pick it up. Uh, they're, they're valid until the end of the month, so you have until Halloween to go and pick up your goodie. But that's our way to kind of cater through the internet. Uh, nice. How's that for e-commerce? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And thank you guys so much for the session. Yeah, thanks for having us. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Yeah. See thank you. Later. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye.